Madam Rachel, slowly awakening from her slumber. Hello! Over the past couple months, you have seen me venture into many a different kinds of crafts, including making very small, tiny things that make you go, ooh! So this week is sort of like that, but completely the opposite. My friends, I don't know if you remember the childlike sense of wonder you got from watching the cinematic masterpiece, The Borrowers from 1997. But let me tell you, I just rewatched it and it was palpable. In fact, if you try to convince me it's not the perfect movie, I would bite my thumb at you. Now, if you have not seen The Borrowers or have heard of it, the concept is based on a novel by Mary Norton. Basically, you have a family of very small, teeny tiny people living in a British flat. <laughs> Basically, you have borrowers and then you have human beings. They venture out every day and try to gather things, but not steal them because they're borrowers. Don't get it wrong. They go out into the kitchen and they do a little parkour. Parkour! Michael, parkour! Extreme! Parkour! Parkour! Big bad guy John Goodman is coming to take the house away. Move to a different house, but then they don't move to a different house, but get on the truck and they come back to the house and then there's foam and like nails and a lot of kind of traumatic stuff there. I feel like P. Green might need a little therapy after this movie. But then they lure this big bad guy John Goodman into this big factory, literally five million other borrowers. F*** this shit up. I'm very good at climbing! <laughs> get to keep the house and the end. Thank you, that's the video. Good night. Anyways, the plot is not important. What is important is the costume design. I could go on and on and on between the set and the costume design. How many tiny little details, well, giant details there are in this film. Figuring out what everything is made of with their costumes because obviously they're like yay big. So everything they wear is repurposed from their human being's house. And so this week I thought we might venture to a little bit of borrower fashion. 30 and flirty, baby. I'm ready to dress like a borrower. It's right up my alley. A little bit of Weasley, a little bit of Autumn. You've heard of cottage core, but what about borrower core? So with that being said, let's venture over and figure out what exactly we're gonna be doing for this week. Honestly, it's pouring rain out, so I grabbed the nearest hat so that my bangs wouldn't get messed up. Well, this is a look, partner. Oh, yeah. All right. I think for this video, I'm not going to follow any specific character. An amalgamation of a borrower's outfit, what I would wear if I was a borrower. Some of this is going to be pretty impractical, but I think some of it I can actually reuse into my real wardrobe and uh, start implementing borrower core. <laughs> so if we take a look at the costume design. Oh, particularly my favorites are Arietti and Mama Borrower. Honestly, it's funny that fashion has turned around so much where she kind of just looks like a Gen Z. It's hard to pinpoint what her outfits are made out of. Obviously the accessories are a little bit easier to place. Like her knee pads are, you know, snaps, band-aids around her arm. Her shoes, I think, are some sort of rubber glove or maybe like a rubber mat. As far as her dress, it's kind of like a vague wool kind of material, which makes sense because if they were just borrowing fabric, um, sometimes it's not immediately recognizable as what it originally was. But if you look at Mama Clock over here, she has like writing on hers, could have been a tablecloth or a napkin or something, a belt, but when she turns around, it's a wristwatch. And uh, that is the frigging cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Let's talk design of my own outfit. Start off with a base dress. Really, really big stitching. I'm also gonna do a little apron, wristwatch belt. I just got regular shoes for this. And if you look at um, Pod Clock, the dad's shoes, they're a little bit more shoe-like and less of just a blob of rubber balls <laughs> a big button really love to try to make this like a little purse that you can wear around it's the opposite of miniatures maxiatures <laughs> so now that i've got the design i'll figure it out i'm going to go pick out a pattern from my pattern stash for the dress and then i will show you what i've picked up so far as far as materials for this I feel like I need a, uh, one of those clouds behind me when I leave. Editing Rachel, if you will. <laughs> me, me. Okay, 
I have been collecting materials for this for the past week or so. Yep. From the antique store, I grabbed patchwork fabric. Laura Amy, February 14th. Aw, little Valentine's Day quilt. <laughs> Presumably pretty old. Honestly, I'm not sure if I will use it for this project or if I'll use it for something else, but I just wanted to grab it. You know, I thought it was adorable. Coffee bag. Ta-da! It's huge. <laughs> it has big, big writing on it. I felt like that was very borrower likes. My plan is to turn this into the apron. I don't know, I just feel like big text kind of helps lead you to believe that I'm little. <laughs> you heard it here first. Forget about vertical stripes if you want to make yourself look tiny. Just wear a big coffee sack. And then we made a little trip to the thrift store. I ended up grabbing this fabric. It is a tablecloth. I'm not sure if it's enough. That is what we will be finding out today. We'll see. I also noticed that they had like a sewing yarn section, which I've never noticed before. Conveniently, it was located where the adult diapers are, which honestly savers, how dare you? <laughs> Pack of three yarn sets, big and chunky. <laughs> figured this would be perfect for the stitching. These shoes, because I felt like they were very borrowery. Borrowery? Borrower, borrowery. <laughs> One last thing I grabbed, which I'm not sure I'm gonna end up using for this video, but I wanted it. Crocheted blanket. So cute. <laughs> An otomy. I would love to make something out of this, but I also struggle with the fact that it's just cute the way it is. I really love those videos of people making stuff out of like blankets and quilts. But then when I actually think about doing it, I'm like, I don't want to murder it. <laughs> anyway, that's my moral quandary. What's yours? Oh, and I also grabbed this sewing pattern. And actually looking at the skirt, it's really freaking cute. And it might be a little bit more voluminous than the pattern that I chose. I might be doing some Frankensteining, the top from this and then the bottom from this. <sighs> I think it is time to get started. First things first, I'm gonna make the dress. Okay. is pretty simple it looks like so we have the front of the bodice the back of the bodice tummy midriff section some front facing and then the sleeve so i think i am going to stick to the plan of making the top out of this and then the other pattern is a bunch of skirt panels <laughs> basically i need to figure out if we can actually have that much fabric in this one tablecloth i'm gonna lay out the fabric and see what we got <laughs> oh <laughs> Hmm. Well, the answer to that question is definitely not enough fabric. Whoops. <laughs> now, unfortunately, that means I think I have to switch up my idea a little. I am going to save this for another project sometime. Switching out this fabric for this, which is this really freaking cute, obviously <laughs> needs to be ironed, wool suiting. There is a massive amount of it. Dang. And that's all more fabric. There's gotta be like 10 yards here. Much more than we even need. So that is good. I will have extra for other projects. It is a little bit of a bummer that I can't use the other fabric, but I think this will be really cute and still really autumn-y and still something that I'm gonna wear, hopefully. So let's get to ironing. <laughs> Yay. What do we do when we're lazy and ironing is the bane of our existence? Steam it, steam it, steam it, steam it. <laughs> Okay, here are all of the pattern pieces. So I've got all the skirt pieces. This one's on a fold. That's one pattern. And then we have the bodice pieces over here. Frankenstein these together <laughs> like a true madman. So now I just have to cut this all out. Oh, let's go. Now that I've got all the pattern pieces cut out, I am going to take all the paper off and attach all the pieces with pins. Then you will focus on me thinks it is precious. Da, da, da. Yeah, I think it is. I shall check back in when everything is all pinned together. All right, I've got the skirt all pinned together. There we go. And then it'll all be 
gathered and very swooshy. Actually stitch all of this together, put the bodice pieces together and do all the darts and stuff. So let's do that. <laughs> This is all sewn and this is what it looks like so far. Eh? With the skirt. Now obviously this is a lot of this one pattern. Thinking that the stitching I want to add, it's gonna help kind of break that up. Need to gather the skirt and then attach the skirt to the bodice. Sleeves, facing, and zipper. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably gonna take today to finish up this dress so that way literally all the boring stuff is just Let's do it! Good morning. Today I have already gone out and I ran a couple errands. I needed glue, zippers, a strap for the button purse that we're going to be making. Now that I have all of that, we can get to work for today. The dress is almost done. Show you. It's super cute. So I still need to do the zipper and like the facings and stuff. Other than that, it's pretty much done. Technically, I feel like their dresses would have like large prints because they're um, small. So as the prophecy once foretold, peh. Probably gonna finish that up off camera because it's just boring stuff. We can start on the fun stuff. Oh no. Oh no. My mic. We can focus on the fun stuff, which is all of the little prop making button purse, which I'm going to make out of foam. Two circular, pre <laughs> circular pieces of foam, all, uh, both the same size, and then make a strip of foam the diameter of that to make it a 3D shape. Uh, a zipper that I'm going to put at the top. I bought this foam, which is just like a rounded, and I'm thinking I can go along the edges, make it look like a button, and then we'll, we'll put like little holes in it. You feel me? And then today I also would like to make the wristwatch belt. Just to go in my closet and find like a chunky belt and just make the actual watch face out of foam or something. We'll get there when we get there. I'm contemplating whether I should make the little knee pads because those are so freaking cute. I need knee pads for when I'm like sprawled out on the floor assuming the position of floor troll. But I don't know. I don't know if I have enough time for that. We'll see. Mr. Trash Man, thank you for taking my trash man. Enough stalling. Let's get started on this little button. I want to take this. This actually came with our air conditioner. It's like two pieces of foam and adhesive back. I was thinking I would have to roll out my annoying big sheet of foam and like heat form it so that it's flat. This might actually save me some time. And it's recycling materials. That's right. Yeah, we're gonna do it. Sound good? Well, good. So to make the button purse, it's pretty easy. I made a circular pattern, just cut those out of the two pieces of foam, started sanding that down so it's a little cleaner, even though my Dremel sounded like it was in an 80s metal hairband. I then use some troll bogies to attach everything. This probably should have taken me a little bit more time than it did because it's not completely circular, but it's fine. <laughs> Okay, I think I am gonna try to make snap knee pads. I think it would be really cute. <laughs> I'm not positive how. The easiest way for me to do this is just make it out of like something moldable. So I have some modeling foam here. I'm gonna try to make it out of that. No promises, but <laughs> basically if we take, oh, <laughs> got a little show here for you. <laughs> Yes, my legs are very hairy. It's fine. Mmm. 
Roll it out. <laughs> a little bigger than that. Yeah, I think that's a good size. Got the big hole in the middle on the side that go all the way through. So it's a little lumpy bumpy now. <laughs> Ain't we all? That was a lot simpler than I thought it was gonna be. So now I'm gonna make another one, but I'm not great at making things symmetrical. So <laughs> smash. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, well, cool. Now that I have that, I have the purse. It is hot garbage on the inside. But hey, it looks okay from the front. That's honestly all I try to go for in my own personal life. So next up, that means we can start on the watch, which I'm pretty excited for. So I'm gonna go dig in my closet and find a big chunky belt. All right, Ugh. who's it gonna be? I feel like this could work. The little clock on the back? All right, let's do it. Packaging of a recent Halloween purchase, I was able to fake that glass for the watch face. And voila, you have both a borrower's clock or a Flavor Flav cosplay in progress. Good morning. Day three, are you ready? Kind of hidden in the corner today because we have a painter doing our front porch and I did not realize how clear I would be in his line of vision. So I'm, <laughs> forgive me if I'm mumbly and quiet and hunched over like a cryptid today. <sighs> the dress is 100% complete, uh, well the base of it. Yesterday, off camera, I took the purse and then the little clock went in with some quick seal. Basically what it is, it's like like a, a plumbing epoxy, I'm pretty sure. Put it on foam work and smooth it out with water. I did that and then let that dry. And then I went over both of them with some Mod Podge. This is a good way to seal the foam so that now when I paint, not seep into the foam like a sponge. And also it makes it a little shiny. We have the clock, nothing extraordinary. It's just, you know, the button purse smooths out this stuff with the quick seal. It's definitely still lumpy bumpy. So you know, you're not really gonna see that, that lumpy bumpy bottom. Lumpy bumpy bottom, that's the new one. <laughs> sure. So now that these are primed and ready to go, I will be painting these today. The little snap knee pads are so freaking cute. Look at them, <laughs> look at it. They're still a little bit wet too. So I'm gonna give these a little bit longer to dry. So basically that leaves stitching, painting, and making the apron today. I'm actually kind of surprised I don't have as much work to do as I thought I did. Oh, you naive sweet sunbeam. So first things first, I'm gonna paint so that that has all day to dry. <laughs> Break. <laughs> much more basic than usual paint job on this because I realized that the more weathering I was doing the more Coraline-esque it was and well that is a vibe it's not the vibe we were going for let's do the apron which I think should be pretty easy big old sack <laughs> just make an apron out of it don't look at me mr. painter man I should just be able to cut a rectangle out of this. We can just like stitch the edges of that. Yeah, and then you make like the straps and it's kind of the same thing. Well, let's do it. Oh, I found some peanuts. What are you? Coffee beans, I think. Ah, uh, beans. It smells like coffee. Ah! Ah! They're everywhere! <laughs> Get out of 
there, Beans. Get out. So taking the giant thread and the gigantic needle, which not so fun fact, I ended up losing later on in the day. So that giant needle is somewhere, maybe in my carpet. Uh, so basically just stitch this like I would with regular thread and needle. And it was way more fun because there's less threat of immediate danger of stabbing yourself, which I do a lot. <laughs> original plan I tried to do this with the dress too and I just I don't know I didn't like how it looked compared to the apron so I ended up just really doing it for the arm sections and that's it ah! it's a giant paper clip <laughs> this is gonna go like on my little tool belt thing come on I completely forgot that I needed to do the big chunky knit vest. Reintroduce the air. I got this online. Thick knit blanket. I am going to use it as a little vest. It's just something about a chunky knit. This is going to be a little tricky and I'm not going to get too fancy with this. I think to make a shape that looks like a vest, double it and sew it and then it'll just be something that I can stretch on and off. I think that should work. We're gonna futz around and find out. Let's do it. I have a feeling once I break this chain that it's all gonna unravel. Pinning the crap out of it, immediately bringing it over to my machine and securing all the edges. Oh, so nice. Wow, is that nice? I see you have commandeered this vessel. Up, up. Thank you. Now, theoretically, this did sort of work, but it was absolutely rage inducing. I decided to ixnay that, get in my PJs because I was sweating, and just hand sew. <laughs> Now, because this looked like pasta stuffed with some sort of ricotta, <laughs> I decided to also hand stitch the edges, which took absolutely forever. <laughs> While she's working on that, let's hop on over to work on the snap knee pads. And back to you, Rachel. Finally, it was sewn and ready for the reveal. <laughs> it's done! I'm so happy. Ta-da! 
overall super happy with it. The dress, freaking cute, and I'm gonna wear it all the time. You don't really get to see too much of it with everything else going on with this outfit. But the only thing that really did not work is the knee pads and I think theoretically I had the right idea but for whatever reason I don't know if it's just humid in this barn the foam clay would not dry I gave it like two days still very mushy on the inside so if we could maybe pour one out for <laughs> the knee pad oh no wrecked this one just squooshed the minute I put it on because I have elastic around it so it's stretching it out what is that Oh my god. Not great. <laughs> I think I had the right general idea, but I don't think the material was quite right. So I might do some research into maybe making a mold, making it out of something else, and using those as actual knee pads. So not only do they have to look cute, they have to also be, you know, functioning. Not that I don't want to look like an extreme 80s rollerblader. Other things that did not go so great, the vest, obviously, it's bulky and it's very, very unflattering. Not making my, my waist and chest area look snatched. It's very large, but I don't know. It's, it's kind of cute anyways. The apron is really cute and I'm totally gonna wear this for other craft projects because I just, I love the stitching. Oh, the clock I think is super freaking cute. And then the button purse does the job quite well. Basically made little slits on the side and then stuck the straps from the purse that I grabbed at the thrift store, stuck those in there and then hot glued. I think eventually I might wanna do a little bit more secure of a job with the straps if I plan to like take this anywhere. But for the purposes of this video, I think it came out fine. Turns out the stitching was completely covered anyways, but it's freaking it, y'all. I don't know, I had a lot of fun with this cause not only was it a sewing project, but it was also like making little props, which you know is my favorite thing. Ooh, yes. This vest is warm. Oh, it's like a bunch of stuffed raviolis insulating my body heat. <laughs> I hope that you had fun. And yes, my the painter who's painting our porch got like a clear view of me doing whatever I was just doing. It will be like a doobie sometimes. If you were a borrower, I would love to know what you would make your clothes out of. Intellectual and interesting conversation to have. <laughs> I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload most Fridays and we have fun here. <laughs> and I will see you in my next video. Bye. So this week's video, exactly where <laughs> My mic fell down. Now it's just hanging off of me like an umbilical cord. Hello? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Ew. I need more pockets in the things that I wear. I have to start sewing like little mic pockets in every skirt that I own. Ow! Oh, mother. <laughs>